your way. I'll rip your throat out, yes, you little bollocks. Pity that cannibal actually made you interesting. Mongrel. This is the devil Will has been tasked to kill. Me? I wish. Met some of the Alturians who got trapped in the hells, though. They did less time than me, but no easier. Oh, fuck me. It's you, from the Nautiloid. Please tell me I found you before those so-called paladins of Tyr did. Nice of you to ask. Lately, I've gotten used to being called devil. No follow-up questions. The truth is, well, it's a long story, and I'll tell it, but... A great heat roars through you. 
Her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The blood war. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. Mountains as far as the eye can see. Guess that explains the voices. From that peak I got into your head, you've made some inroads trying to get the thing sorted. But alas, no joy. I'm Karlak. And you are. Well met, soldier. Now that we're old pals, how would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? A little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. I was good at killing demons. Really good. So good, Zariel, the Archdevil herself, made me her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there. It took me ten years to properly escape, but now I'm free. Zariel sent goon after goon to hunt me down. But believe me when I tell you, I'm not going. The latest yappy little dog she sicked on me are nearby. A group of dopes posing as paladins of tear. Wanna help me take them down? Fuck yes. They cornered me outside the toll house, just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. After we've mopped them up, we can work on evicting this parasite and take Faerun by the short hairs. Sound good? I like her. She looks like she could throw me over her shoulder and carry me to safety. Should the need arise. I'd hug you if it wouldn't scorch your skin off. Hang on, though. Looks like you've got enough backup at your side. Not sure there's room for me. I'll catch up with you when it's time to camp for now. But don't get to any of the fun stuff without me. Got it? We may have to increase our camp provisions now that we have Karlak along for the journey. If you're sure. If you're sure. Fine. I'll give up now. Karlak's got... Best of all, she speaks her mind plainly and fully. Show her due respect. Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? As you say. Let's go, go, go. I'm never coming back. And if any of Mummy's little friends want to pick up where the others left off, they'll find nothing but a pile of ash.
That's right, she won't. She can't. She couldn't even lay a finger. <laughs> slowing down. What about it? Had to let off a little steam after facing off with those ignots. Granted, the fire lasted a little longer than it should. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. Burn, baby. As hot as I can tolerate. Makes me a beast in battle. Hardly remember what I was like before it. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. Sounds like a good lead. Hopefully our guy will be among them. A tune-up would do this old tub a world of good. One horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. Well, I'll be God's damned. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Karlak, the Archdevil Zeriel's gladiator. Come to burn the Sword Coast to ash. Well, not counting the fuckers that need a good hurting. Shut it, devil. I know your kind. A heart darker than a shadow's nightmares. You'd cut a child's throat just to taste the blood. A devil? I didn't take the blade for a fool. I'm... A great fire roars through you. The fire of the first hell. You are Karlak, tearing through demons across a blood-red landscape of fire and volcanic cinder. The front lines of the Blood War. With every swing of her axe, Karlak fulfills Mistress Zariel's purpose. Proof! Clear as summer sky! It's over, Karlak! It's time you feel the sting of the blade! I've tried to tell you. I'm not what you think I am. Another vision. Karlak's blade rays slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking a swill shudders with Karlak's desperation. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. By Baldurin's helm, I... No, I will not... You saw the truth. I may be an effective soldier, but I never wanted to serve Zariel. Legged it away from her the first chance I got. And yet you served. No! Devils cannot be trusted! monsters better than anyone can't you look in my eyes and see I'm not a devil you don't know what this means you don't know what you're asking me to do 
I'm asking you to live, Will. I don't want to hurt you. And to be frank, I'd rather not find out how the Blade got his name. I swear to you, on all I am, I'm not what you think. Shit! Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I see the good in you, Karlak. I promise not to lose sight of it. Even when the hells burn hottest. You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. I can say only this. Karlak's not the only one who's had a villain's knife held to their throats. One night soon, when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. Mm, you don't know the half of it. Thank goodness that's all dealt with. The odds are stacked high enough against us already. No need to turn on each other. Yes, Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral. The end of Carsus and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I tried to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. I know what it is to hunger. And I know what it takes to keep that hunger under control. He's done that so far. 
despite his condition. So long as he sates his appetite elsewhere, I'm happy to give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Nothing like a little camp drama to spice up the evening. <laughs> it's almost a pity things ended so amicably. Seeing those two duke it out would be fun. So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the Gur after me. It was a group of Gur that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me. Well, he didn't mention the slave claws at the time. And now he sends a Gur monster hunter for me. It's a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Safe! You think I'm safe? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. You don't understand. You don't know him. Just trust me when I say we need to be careful. He'll send more lackeys. He has plenty of souls to command. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. We can probably make an exception for Will. Probably. Glad Will saw sense. Even more glad he decided to stick around. Takes a pretty slick mover to track down old Karlak. Same. Now, instead of a liability, I've got a friend. Or... I will have Sue, anyway. Hope you're keeping well, friend. Master. Friend. I stayed with him until... until I knew he was gone. I'll never forget him. But I'm glad to have met you.
Well, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. Now? But I'm just getting comfy. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Thanks for the reminder. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done a promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even i can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade karlak keep an eye on him would you i'll be keeping mine on you Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right. And Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pets tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. I'll say what I can, but it won't be enough. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this, the moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. 
It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Even in such fraught times as these, there is peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. I used to while away many hours just like these with my companion. Though in far comfier surrounds, she preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. Everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara. My Tressim. Assistant. My constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The saviour of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement. Her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. She has a good heart. You should recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress' coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. She'll love you. So long as you don't rub her belly. She hates it when anyone does that. The pleasures I experienced in Mistress Embrace go far beyond the thrill of having one's tummy tickled. I remember once... She took the smallest piece of the weave and made it into... Wait, are you saying... I see. Then perhaps we see each other in the same light after all. A resplendent one, flush with warmth and anticipation. But one which I must shy away from, for now. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak. Go, enjoy your evening. Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. And mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. Shah's blessings upon you. I'm sure you do. But please try to understand that it's not something I can just talk about freely. Perhaps there's potential in you. Let's see how you handle this. I am indeed a disciple of Shah. Mistress of the Night and Lady of Loss. I assume you've heard of her?
My Lady Shah is the Night Singer, the patron of darkness and loss. Most fear the dark, like children, because in darkness they see their fears reflected. But Shah teaches us to step beyond fear, beyond loss. In darkness, we do not hide. We act. Pain, hope, the promise of better days. All of these are heavy cloaks that bend our backs and burden our hearts. We shed those cloaks. Before Shah, we stand gloriously naked, beyond the vanities of mortals. We tear down the lies the world is drunk of, the institutions they trust, the so-called gods they worship. The lives they cling to. We destroy false idols. Topple corrupt organizations. Fight heretics wherever they're found. There's often suffering. Death, even. Many people break before they embrace Shah's truths. You're wiser than most. Many people balk at our doctrine. It's the reason why we cherish secrecy. You've a habit of saying all the right things. Either you're very glib or we're kindred spirits. Maybe both know myself. But yes, once we've saved ourselves, we can talk more on this. dog pants through a ball held firmly in his mouth. He relinquishes the ball. It is well chewed and slick with drool. His eyes track the ball avidly. He shuffles on his paws, ready to chase after it. Scratch's tongue lolls out. Hope you're keeping well, friend. There's something I've been wanting to share with you, if now's a good time. It's difficult to put into words. I think it might be easier to just show you. Use the tadpole. The connection. Come into my mind. I'm sure. I trust you. How I came to be who I am. How I found my way to Lady Shah's embrace. I don't remember how it started. Only how it ended. I was fleeing.
asked my name. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember anything before those words. All I know is she saved my life and gave me a new home with Lady Shah. <laughs> it hurts. That's all I remember. You remember that it is common amongst Saluna's followers to send their children into the woods alone, a rite of passage to find their way home. Perhaps this one has gone awry. You're reading too much into things. A childhood bauble, that's all. Just because Salunites claim something doesn't mean they own it. Lady Shah. But yes, her, she made me who I am. At least as best as I can remember. She taught me trained me abuse nonsense the mother superior made me strong for the dark lady pain is the gauntlet that ought to try and salve myself would do nothing but shame me in the night singer's eyes you're right but there's little we can do about it just now maybe a way will present itself in time if lady shah wills it you feel the what's this It's, it's a, a splinter. splinter. Well, I've got, got a bigger, bigger threat than you with worse. A fight? You'd be a plaything. You can go. You seem a nice so may have welcomed you, but I can see you're not one of her thugs. You need to buy me. Selling voice! I am not some lower city coin lad offering you a tumble. I am an artist, and my patron will reward you for my rescue. Tenfold, whatever ransom you pay, I guarantee it. As far as you're concerned, she may as well be the coin maiden herself. But there will be time for questions later. Please. Speak to Brem. I need to see the sun again. Don't touch anything, you ain't... Well, if you have the gold, my pet artist will make you a most heroical likeness.
I doubt you've got that kind of dosh line about. Something I can help you with? I doubt you've got that kind of dosh line about. All right, so maybe I was fishing. No fool in you. He's all yours. All right, back already? Of course. Pleasure. Well met. Are you sure? The blade stands at the ready, and just... You wish to speak? With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. Contraptions are hot ticket item. Might not be our last scrap for its sake. That's the short of it. Bloody thing's been in overdrive since I left Avernus. Fuck you. Yeah. ...to the Amorites every month on the 30th of the month, because that was a night of no moon on a... 30-day lunar right. calendar, right. they would have to summon the ancestors by calling their names. Well. And then they would have a ritual meal and pour out a drink offering to keep the ancestors alive in the afterlife. But here, Isaiah is saying, other lords have ruled over us, but your name alone we bring to remembrance. The others are going to be forgotten and fade away to nothing. Verse 14, they are dead, they will not live. They are Rephaim, they mm. will not arise. To that end, you have visited them with destruction and wiped out all remembrance of them again another slap at this cult of the dead and then so in verse if, you 19, are Isaiah, ref, if you are a referee ref, refine, you have no chance to be resurrected uh, that is run correct i think i, I think ezekiel prophesied that well as well but in verse 19 of isaiah 26 he reads or he writes your dead the shall live. This is a prophecy of resurrection of the faithful. The patriarch a prophecy of resurrection of the to Old Testament. Your dead shall live. Their bodies shall rise. You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for I joy. Not run your away. dew is a dew of life. The date was never set. There were and now this last sentence here, I think, was badly translated in most of the English Bibles. The I ESV reads, the earth will there give birth a, to the dead. The earth will yes. give birth to another woman. Rephaim. That seems to when contradict verse 13 and 14 above. But, when they but the word of future, translated well, give birth, ironically enough, right is that to my past. the fall, right, that scholars think that's the root behind the word Nephilim. And when you do it, you do it with a search through the Old Testament to 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 using Bible software. To choose, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I know how to use the search engine. You find that every other place that verb is used, the fall, it means exactly that, to fall, to fall, has fallen, fall down, will fall, has fallen. I wish I could harden so my heart, one verse, Still, they translated, right. give birth. We have the matter of my <laughs> Because I don't think they knew what to make of it. It's only Seth, been the last 40 years or so that scholars have realized that there was could this you? cult of the dead the discomforts around of ancient Israel. The better translation here, and this is the way it's translated in the Septuagint, okay. which is, you know, in your course, is, which of course, yeah. Probably means it's right. Go ahead. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. The land, the land of the land Seek me out in the city. The land Truly. Of the ungodly. Beneath my brush. Fall, or you live take forever. a Masoretic reading, which is translate Until that Boulder's verb gate, to fall then. correctly. The land of the Rephaim will fall. Yeah. Well, we don't know that Og was Careful. nine cubits or 13 feet tall. No stone yeah. sense. His bed was four cubits by nine cubits. But that just happens to match exactly, and we know this from an inscription found at the site of ancient Babylon, that matches exactly the dimensions of the cultic bed in the temple of Marduk, where it was believed that Marduk, on the New Year's celebration called the Akitu Festival, would um, have um, ritual sex with his consort, Sarbanatu, to bless the land for the coming year. And this was scholars debating whether the king stood in for Marduk and there was a, 
uh, a Hiradul, a, a, a temple priestess who would uh, stand in for uh, Sarpanatu. But the point I think that Moses is making is that hey, the soldier. bed of Og was echoing because Og was an Amorite, and the kingdom of the Babylon was founded. Ten Amorites. Hammurabi the Great the was place. an Amorite. There is Sleepy no ethnicity. There was no Baldur's ethnicity Gate. called Babylonia. Our hero right. Can't. Like saying I am a Chicagoite because I was born from the in outer Nelton. city. Sorry, I'm German, everything English, to Swedish, Swedish, Welsh, and nothing to lose. Uh, no, other things. I was a kid um, looking for a way so to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. To the occult wickedness Work of the for a guy I respected. Of the Amorites based in Babylon by connecting that. The size Turns out the bed. feeling wasn't neutral. Um, now, was he of unusual so size? I don't know. Reels, Bible doesn't tell us just mention the size of his bed, but I don't think it's called you know Zaria, right? the same size Arch as the Arch-Devil of Avernus. Bed in the temple she of put this thing in well, my chest and set me to work. How about, how about Goliath? But, Goliath. Um, well, I learned Doug, quick in the situation, stay alive. as you know, and the uh, Goliath was mentioned as being four cubits in a span, rather than six cubits in a span. So he was six foot nine rather than nine foot nine. Now, that is still really, really big. I looked this up. The average Israelite in the time of Goliath, around 1000 BC, was about five foot four. 